Hello, everyone. Today we are going to talk about relative clauses and pronouns. Uh, this lesson is divided into two parts. In the first part, we are going to learn about relative clauses. And in the second part, we are going to learn about relative pronouns. What are relative clauses? I would like you to have a look at these words. Sings beautifully and John versus John sings beautifully. Which one makes sense? I hope you chose John sings beautifully. So when we put some words in a specific order and they can stand as a sentence, then it is a clause. Why are they called like that? Why are they called relative clauses? They are called relative clauses because the sentences are related to each other. Relative clauses are related to phrases of words. Let's take an example. I got tickets to see Rita Ora. This is one clause. Rita Ora sings like an angel. This is another clause. If we want, we can join these two sentences together by replacing Rita Ora with who, so we avoid the repetition and putting a comma after Rita Ora. Uh, actually, both of them, both of these clauses can stand by themselves, but as I said, to create a new sentence, uh, we can put a comma and the pronoun who. So, I got tickets to see Rita Ora, comma, who sings like an angel. So, what's the difference between a sentence and a clause? Uh, actually, a, a clause by itself can be a sentence if we want, but we can put two or more clauses together to form a large sentence. There are other things to talk about clauses, but I'm going to uh, post them in another video. How many types of relative clauses are there? There are two types of relative clauses. We have defining and non-defining. A defining relative clause gives essential, crucial, important information about the subject of the sentence. And we do not use commas to separate definite uh, relative clauses from the rest of the sentence. A defining relative clause is essential in the sentence, why? because we need it in order to know who and, wh and what someone is describing. For instance, the beautiful girl who is dancing is called Heather. So we know there is a beautiful girl, she is dancing, and her name is Heather. With non-defining relative clauses, uh, it's a little bit different because they give, uh, they give additional or extra uh, information. And uh, this information is not essential, essential. We can put commas or parentheses, and uh, mostly commas are used to separate non-defining relative clauses from the rest of the sentence. Let's have a look at this one. John, comma, who I bought my video from, comma, has moved to England. But I can even say John, has moved to England, so there is no need for an extra, for this extra information. Relative pronouns, who and whom refer to people. What refers either to people or things. Who's the possessive of whom and which. When used after nouns referring time. Where user used after nouns referring place. And why used to refer to reasons. Uh, there is a little chart here to help you remember and memorize uh, the real, uh, relative pronouns better. But we have to be careful. The relative pronoun replaces uh, the subject or the object, but it does not replace both of them. Let's have a look at these sentences. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. So we cannot say, we cannot say people who uh, they live. Okay, so use either the subject or the object. The book which uh, he bought months ago is very expensive, but we can't say the book, comma, which he bought it. Okay, that's wrong. A relative pronouns, who and whom. Is there a difference between them? For sure there is. Both can be used in relative clauses, but in informal English, it is always safe to use who as both subject and object. However, in formal written English, who is the object form often used with a preposition. 
Let's have a look at these sentences. My brother, comma, who I live with, comma, knows a lot about uh, cars. So this is a non-defining relative clause. And the other one is a defining relative clause. The people who live in this, is in this uh, housing development is, uh, is planned aren't happy about it. Let's have a look at uh, whose. We use whose to add information about a person or thing just mentioned. So remember, we can't use whose unless the name of the person uh, is mentioned in the previous uh, sentence or chapter, uh, sentence, sentence. Uh, let's have a look at this sentence. Mike is going to sail around the world alone. Full stop. His yacht is sponsored by a leading British firm. Now, now let's change this to clauses into a non-defining relative clause. Mike, comma, whose yacht is sponsored by a leading firm, British firm, comma, is going to sail around the world alone. Okay, we can even say Mike is going to sail around the world alone. Now, uh, I have written two sentences here. Please have a look at them. And then tell me, is there a difference between them or not? I'm gonna read them for you. The sports facilities, which are not in regular use, will be sold. The other one, the sport facilities, comma, which are not in regular use, comma, will be sold. If your answer is that yes, there are differences, you are right. Because commas do play a very important role in English grammar. The first sentence, the sport facilities which are not in regular use will be sold. Only the sport facilities which are not being used will be sold. Whereas in the second sentence, we can, as I said, we can uh, just cross uh, the part in, in, in commas. We can say the sport facilities will be sold. So basically all the facilities will be sold because they are not being used. We are going to continue with the lesson in a few minutes together. So, see you later.